but how it usually goes is that the North kind of falls in on itself. It falls into famine. It falls into tyranny. You get hundreds of millions of people suffering from malnutrition and then ultimately dying. Um, the, the coast goes one way. The interior kind of breaks off and shatters. And then the cities of the coast in the south, your Shanghai, your Fujian, your Guangzhou, your Hong Kong, they basically become independent city-states and integrate with foreign powers primarily in order to get food. And if you look back at the last 14 centuries, for almost that entire period until 1945, the city-states have been dependent upon foreigners to keep themselves alive. So we're really just reverting to a historical meme here. Now, one of the things that's really disturbing to the West is watching what's happened to Hong Kong. Sure. That Hong Kong has essentially been taken over by the CCP and they've imposed their rule of law on people that had existed in more or less a westernized democracy. Right. Like, wh how do they control that? The Chinese? Yeah, I mean... Well, Hong, Hong Kong would probably be one of those cities that splits off. Uh, but for that to happen, you first have to have the northern section basically fall in on itself. As long as there are security services, these southern cities can't go their own way. But as soon as something happens to those security services and they're focused on the homeland in the north, then the, the southern cities are going to bolt. Now, what does China think about? Did they have an understanding of this collapse, or is it just because See, of Xi's power over everyone that, that none of this gets discussed, See, so there's this no is, planning? This is one of the beautiful things about authoritarianism, is they start telling stories and eventually they believe them. It happened in Russia, it's happening in China. Uh, Chinese academics as recently as 10 years ago were very, very aware of this, and it shaped government policy. They wanted to make sure that the, the Democrats, little d, uh, in Hong Kong didn't get too uppity. They tried to make sure that there were people from the South on the Politburo. But as we've gotten into a more ossified and centralized decision-making system, all of the lessons of the past are going away, and it's all about central control. And they're, once again, because this is another trend that pops up in China over and over again, they're forgetting their own history. But China has always been thought of as a country, at least the narrative has always been, that they plan long game. Yeah, it's a plan... bunch of crap. Is it? Yeah, no, the Chinese are just as bad as everyone when it comes to ideological blinders and short-term decision-making. And the more isolated and concentrated the decisions, or I'm sorry, the, the tools of power become, the more problematic that becomes. So what is their plan on getting through what you think is a 10-year timeline for their demise? Uh, beat the nationalist drum so that when the food and the energy run out, everyone is banding together simply because they're Han Chinese. That's it? That, that, that's as good as it's going to get because there is no trade option out of this without the United States.